welcome. In this session in Linear Data Analysis, we'll explore the Davies-Bolton Index. This is an index that arises in many contexts. The contexts that we'll see it in are clustering and dimensionality reduction. So here's the basic idea. Suppose that we are given some data and that these are in, we'll say, two groups. So what we have are data vectors, and these are data vectors that we have an index, and these are either in a set one or they're in set two. And what we want to know is if the data are partitioned into sets, how good are these partitions? So these partitions in clustering might arise from the partitioning that we get out of, for example, k-means clustering, or in dimensionality reduction, we might have labels, and when we project the data from a higher dimension to a lower dimension, the labels go along with it. And what we'll end up with are partitions or groups of data. And what we would like to do is we'd like to numerically evaluate the results. So here are two examples. Here, what we have are what we would colloquially, we would visually say are two clusters, and these are tight and separate clusters. And I'm showing them in different colors here. Down here, suppose that we have a label that are projecting from a higher dimension. And here, what we would say is, well, the clusters seem to be spread apart, and they're close together. And those ideas of spread apart and close together are what the Davies-Bolden Index is trying to clarify. Let's now be clearer. Let's suppose that um, in set one, we have m sub one members, and in set two, we have m sub two members. And these can be different, different sizes, but all of data vectors are more or less the same, and we need that similarity so that we can do some computations. Now, the first thing that we'll observe from these two examples are how far apart are the centers. So what we can do is we can say we have two centroids. So we'll have centroid, and we like to use the symbol G. So G1 is the centroid of set one, and you could think of it as either these purple or these greenish ones. And then the other set will have a centroid G2. And so one thing we could do is we could measure the difference. So what we could do is we could measure the difference between the centroids, G1 minus G2. And that would be a vector, and one of the usual ways for us to evaluate a vector is to take the vector norm. So we could take the norm of that vector, and as these got, get closer and closer together, what does that, what are we saying? Well, imagine here that we bring this cluster and it starts to approach that cluster. We would say that's not good. And so what we would do is say a larger dB index is a poorer separation. So if this cluster was really, really close to that, then the difference in the norms would be very small. And so instead, what we'll do, let's underline that we're going to use, we'll use 1 over the distance between the clusters. So that is one part of the Davies-Bolton Index. That is how separated there are. The next thing we need to do is we need to figure out how dispersed the data are. So we would say that these have a low dispersion and these have a high dispersion. How could we measure dispersion? Well, one way that we could do it is to use variance. And if we were trying to use variance, what we would end up with in two dimensions, we would end up with a two by two covariance matrix. And it might be a little difficult to figure out when we have multiple clusters and we have high dimensions, how these, how these clusters or labels, how these partitions how do we manage a whole bunch of covariance matrices? So instead, what we can do is we can measure. What we'll do is measure the mean 
distance within a partition. So what we could do is we could say, well, what's the average distance for, um, for uh, set one? So what we could do is we could call that, for example, distance one. And we could say that distance one is we could take the sum as i goes from 1 to m1 of all of the vectors that are in the ith vector that's in that set. And we could say, well, what's its distance to centroid number 1? And that would be a vector. And we could measure that vector by taking the vector norm. And that would give us the sum of the distances of each of the members in, let's say, this cluster from its centroid. And we would then divide that by m1. And d1 would now give us the average distance for this cluster of the distance from each of the vectors to the centroid. Likewise, what we can do is we can say that distance 2 is 1 over m2. And just for clarity, I'll use a different uh, loop index or summation index. I'll say the sum as j goes from 1 to m2 of the norm of xj minus g2. And so what I would be able to do is I would be able to measure the dispersion of the first partition and the dispersion of the second partition. So now I have these. Well, what would a tight cluster look like versus loose clusters? Well, what I could do is I could say I could use I could use d1 plus d2. That is, I could simply add up the dispersions of the two clusters and say that that's a measure. So now I have a slight problem. That is, I have one measure which is the distance between the centroids, or the inverse distance between the centroids. And then I have another measure, which is the sum of the dispersions. And what the dB index does is really simple, and that is it multiplies these two measures. So we say that the dB index is we take the sum of the dispersions, so d1 plus d2, and then we multiply it by the inverse of the distance between the centroids. And so that would be the norm of g1 minus g2. And if we do that, what we're doing in this dB index is we're combining these two ideas. The smaller this number is, that means it's a combination, a nonlinear combination, as it turns out. It's a combination of the dispersion of the two partitions and the distances between the centroids of the partitions. So what we do is we're taking two different measures, the inverse distance of the centroids and the dispersions, and we're multiplying those two together. And when we multiply them together, what we get is the dB index. Now, in code and in the paper that we cite for this course, um, what you'll see is that this is actually generalized, and what they do is they consider having uh, a larger number of these partitions, and they can be in any dimensional vector space, and so on. And the dB index for multiple clusters gets a little more complicated, but this is the basic idea, is that the dB index is simultaneously trying to minimize a smaller dB index is minimizing the dispersion, the net dispersion of the clusters, and maximizing the distance between the centroids of the clusters.